it's a fairly decent sized leak there. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can clean up this sight glass. Yeah, there's the indicator, it's all fiddle farted. It might make it a little easier to see. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So today we're gonna to go over here and look at a cooler or something of the sorts. It's not working right. We don't usually get a lot of great details. It's at a grocery store here and something's not working right. And this place has got some really old equipment. So we're gonna see what we got going on and see what's not working. Just walked around the store and looked at it. We have a 32 foot produce case. We have a walk-in cooler and possibly another walk-in cooler to look at. So we just uh, calibrated outside. Let's go and see what we can find going on in here. There is oil all over this thing right here. Oh, somebody's pinched that. That's probably why. I swear I thought I was gonna get a major hit there. Oop, we got something going on. Okay, so we're walking out here in the aisle way and then we did some number here. Oh, that's always a great sign. I'm loving it. Hey, for those people out there who don't like the way I I'm pessimistic about this. Don't watch my channel. You know, it's funny how you idiots leave uh, comments. So all you do is complain. You know what? Don't watch people. I, You already know everything. There's no sense of watching my channel. All right, let's go up here to the compressor room. All right, so this is probably one of the older of the olds. Bunch of little independent systems. And that's how they used to run it. There's your low ambient cooling, nodulating dampers, which don't work. Exhaust fans over top. So I've worked on several of these. These things have just got major issues. Labeling, not the greatest. Also, the MP39 was a great touch. That was the half-ass way of uh, converting things back in the day. We've converted some of these to 134A, and then uh, cover the refrigerant. That way you can use it on the existing ones, and once that's gone, he's gonna have to convert these to. Some of these compressors have already been switched over, so they're a POE, but these older stores, they don't have the budget that the big boys have got. So you just do what you can do. I believe this is it. Once again, it's 32-foot dairy. We got two different ones. So you got some solenoids, T-stats. So this one's really warm. Uh, old we'll do wrong. We got walk-in meat and produce. Uh, there was a produce yet we didn't see. Not exactly sure which meat walk-in. It probably would be there where he's doing the, uh, where he's actually cutting the meat. All right, this just shut off. So now's a good time to start doing some searching. Most of it doesn't pump down. Some does, some don't. Looks like a lot of oil there on the end on it. And it's got monster receiver down here on bottom. Looks real good in there. All right, I think we found something pretty good. Come in here on the nut. Right on the actual valve. We're up there in the high numbers. Yeah, it's a, it's a fairly decent size leak there. It was bigger a minute ago. Sometimes this stupid phone's not been recording, but we definitely got a problem there. It's not fluorinated. The reason for that is you don't want to burn the fluorine with a torch. Spent some uh, poisonous gas there. sure that's dead if not that's where this comes in handy come in here with that it's just a uh, trailer pin hitch type thing so it makes it a little easier now we can get in here and actually clean this up a little bit that's how we go that extra mile So 
something's oddball here, I'll tell you that. I don't know, I'm not, I mean, I would have figured we had some bigger bubbles than what we're getting. I don't really even see bubbles yet. Turn this turd back on. Use the magnet. Get that pressure built back up. This is not the quickest way to look for a leak with a parts per million, but it does at least tell you if you're going up or going down. At some point here, we're gonna have to juice it back up, get it running. I prefer to make a repair before I add more refrigerant to it, because you never know if that can hold enough for all three uh, coolers. All right, what we're gonna do is pump this thing down. We'll. Uh, See if we can relube the seals on the on the solenoid. Maybe put some nylog on them. Some on the uh, filter dryer. I don't have uh, rebuild kits for them because you know that'd be too common. Normally we just chop it out and replace it. Nothing's wanting to bubble, but the detector keeps going nuts on it. So unless it's floating from somewhere else, I don't know. But either way, we got to get started on something here. I don't even know what these guys were thinking about back when they used to install this crap. Just no common sense whatsoever. Okay, what I did, I pumped it down a little further because obviously the pressure switch cut out. And then I ended up putting my gauge on there and then uh, took it to a negative, unfortunately. Then I ended up just opening up my valve a little bit, brought it back up to a positive pound or two. That way I can take it apart without getting gassed out and blown away. You can see right there, there's not much of a seal there. See that right there looks kind of rough and nasty looking, so we're gonna clean that up with wire brush as best we can. Honestly, I'd prefer just to replace it. I think that might be what we do. Yeah, that looks pretty, pretty ratty right there. Now we got it off, it was dirt. And that is blowing back out of me just a little bit. So we're not getting anything down in the, in the valve. It's critical that brass be perfectly smooth for the most part. Supposedly they sell some of these kits. I don't know, it's really hard to get it. I really feel like we need to just replace it. All right, we got this turned on up here, trying to pull any gas out that might be leaking out. This is gonna be a lot of fun to say the least because we don't stock the nice copper ones. We only stock the brass, which is a pain in the ass to try to Sprays in, and this is a really good example where it'd be nice to have the other. We got the okay to do it. And then we're gonna have to be careful that we don't catch it on fire in here when we're getting in there because it's all oily. So the new one, probably gonna be short. Yeah, it's short. We're gonna cut this thing out. We're gonna move it off to the left. That way we can actually get in there to braze on it and not catch the house on fire type thing. made me a 5 8 uh, coupling. I'll go ahead and stick this in between here like that. And then we're going to cut it over here. That will help it so that I can uh, relieve any pressure it might be building up. We'll braze this in right here, make it a little easier. I already ran the pipe cleaner on this. What I'm gonna do also, I'm gonna braze this in advance on the bottom so I don't have to uphill my joint, which will make it a little easier. Might as well do it external of the unit. No, we're not gonna use any nitrogen. You're not gonna contaminate the whole system. There's no places to bleed it. It's just one of them things with some of this commercial refrigeration when you have piss poor installations to begin with and back in the day when it didn't matter because you were using mineral oil. They, there's no good way to isolate anything. You just do the best you can to try to keep it reduced as much as possible and kind of go from there. Judge or whatever, anybody that's freaking doing this will know it. Sometimes things get a little ridiculous. There ain't nothing wrong with doing it right, but sometimes you just can't do it. Okay. So you've got your in and out 
definitely want to clean that up as best as possible because you're going to have to use flux and it's 45% at least. So we got that. We got that. glass a little bit. I tried taking apart the filter dryer. They've got it so tight I can't even break it loose. Um, that's probably why it might, might have been leaking, but which generally you want to make sure you use a six a point wrench if you're going to do this. What a joke. Yeah, there's the indicator. It's all fiddle farted. Yeah, the inside of that glass looks so bad. I mean, we're getting we're getting stuff off the glass, but it's still it's still a mess. It really needs taken out and replaced, but we ain't got time for that. Obviously, the reason why we use the uh, brake cleaner a lot of times is because it evaporates really quick, doesn't leave a lot of any any new residue behind. But you definitely want to use a six point. If you try to get on there with a crescent wrench, something like that, you're gonna you're gonna strip it out. And then you'll really be screwed. I'm gonna stop there. I don't wanna get too stupid. You always can tighten it more, but man, I don't like over tightening it. Got my 3 8 hose here. Mainly it's like I said, it's been bleeding backwards from the suction. that back together pulling the three eighths back to the pump luckily they had a plug up there this has been a lifesaver otherwise we've been gassed out not the way i want to do it guys but you know there's times you got to do what you got to do and we are fighting the clock i mean you've got some things out there that don't matter if they get a little bit warmer but you know we don't have milk in there but we do have some dairy products so i mean either way it's supposed to stay under 40 41 technically but 40 is usually the number i always go with also, that oil container was empty. Made great for a non-combustible base. You can see as I find things, they get labeled. This is the last disaster I worked on. I forget 
the drains were plugged up, caused it to freeze up. So that was a week or two ago. This one here was MP39 at one time. Somebody switched it over to 34A. Pretty sure that's what it is, R12 originally. And you gotta sit there and take everything down through the ladder there. It's I just realized at the last minute I needed a ball valve on that, so obviously I'm not using my manifold. So I took the magnet off of it, isolated it there, hooked up the ball valve to that. Now we're just pulling on this little section from here to here. I'll be able to valve it off and then open up that valve. Because normally you can use the valve as your stop, but obviously that's not gonna work. There we go. Now we should be able to back this thing all the way out. And we can check, see if we got refrigerant uh, leaking in any of my joints. We just sprayed all this stuff here, nothing. Went ahead and sprayed that valve. So hooked that back up, got the cap back on. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing turned on. That should energize the valve and we should be able to see it. It does appear that that sight glass is a lot better than what it was. So we can actually see, you know, some flow now a little bit better than the mud that was going through. There it goes. That's a lot better, holy macaronis. That's actually white. Not seeing any leakage down there. Let's see if we got any leakage up here on this top. And I just help make sure that there's nothing leaking that's maybe blowing it off. Does not appear to be. All right, this old beast here don't have any suction ports anywhere else to add to it. You gotta do it right at the darn compressor, which kind of sucks because you're gonna have to be, you know, feeding it liquid right off the bat. This 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 equipment's just plain shock. Sixteenth and quarter, but I got everything else. And these are six point. Uh, Klein has a set, which they're all made by the same company. But I do have links to this stuff down in my description. All my tools are down in the description. Okay, we're just adding here. Doing it right off the liquid. You can see down here that we got pretty empty sight glass. Must have just been on that solenoid because I'm not picking up anything on the filter dryer at all now. Nothing on the glass. Bend it around backwards and try to get it on the back side, not getting anything there. Nothing on the back side of those back side of this. Yeah, I think we're good on that. Uh, not really enough refrigerant to completely fill it. Uh, probably gonna have to talk to him about that. I would say this probably takes 75 pounds. That's a humongous receiver. But I had a 250, 300 on my uh, readout on that liquid uh, solenoid. And that would definitely leak it out pretty quick. Now there's probably more and I'm gonna have to go around and look for them. But that's half full isn't gonna cut it. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to convert. And it's AB oil, aquiline benzene, not POE. So unfortunately, he's gonna have to have an oil change on top of that. So good figure. Yeah, just a just a bad situation for the guy. It's been a long time coming. Okay, we're scanning down here in this room where I hit a hit earlier. I had him shut the fans off. And I am not picking up anything down here at all. I've kind of even probed in here, but you got a solenoid there that can shut down and kind of screw you and pump out the refrigerant. But yeah, it's nothing on that. Then you got this one over here. I mean, if it was a big enough leak that it should be going crazy, we should be picking something up. Usually when I have like, you know, monster leaks and stuff, it's, it just picks it right up in the air band and I'm not picking up anything at all. This one here has a solenoid. So what's happening is these sh as these shut down, it sends more refrigerant to the other cases. And it appears that the dairy case is getting decent uh, cooling now. 
So I think it was close to 40 and dropping. But yeah, we're not not really picking up much of anything. Let me check up above the ceiling a little bit, just kind of see. All right, guys, this is a freaking nightmare up here. All these potential leaks, all this line. I mean, these are crazy. You can hear rattling, rattling's bad. All them lines go there. You got these lines down here, all these here. But if there's something up here leaking, I had a little bit of hit something as I came up, but then you got lines over here. This thing's just a flipping maze. Oh, look at tubing, tubing. Uh, well, that's that's actually up to date. That's actually 12, 12 gauge THHN. Yeah, this is uh, tubing knob wiring up here, cloth tape. So, I mean, we definitely got unbelievable amount of refrigerant up here lines. But what I'm doing is just kind of going along and seeing, I mean, it, if there's some good size leaks, it should be going nuts. Um, but that rattling and stuff, that's not a good sign. Yeah, this is just crazy. That's the compressor room over there. So it's never a bad idea to kind of just scan all over up here. Even if it's not the one, maybe I can find another leak. Just to kind of show you how old this building is, look at that truss system there. Five two by fours, yeah, five two by fours on each side, sandwiched together. I mean, that's some pretty amazing stuff. I haven't picked up anything up here at all. But this is pretty, pretty wild. I'll tell you what, compared to the some of the grocery stores I've been working in. This actually is kind of at least you can get to some of this stuff. And if there's a leak, I mean, it's going to float around in here. And since there's no wind, you would pick it up. I think my other case is over here in the middle, which I think I'm going to try to sniff over to the edge. But look at a little Pepsi can there. That's from a couple, couple weeks ago for sure. Cherish the Pepsi spirit. I'm thinking we're gonna have to do the conversion. I talked to him about it, and uh, we're gonna probably have to come back. It seems to be cooling down enough that we'll be fine. We don't have to rush to it now, because that may take 75 pounds or more, I don't know. I'm gonna bring 100 probably with me just in case. Uh, I only carry about 50. That's quite interesting. Yeah, that's kind of scary the way that's making noise over there. Wow. That's where vibration happens and you get a leaky leaky. But yeah, there's a line over here somewhere over in that area. I'll check that and then we'll wrap it up.